Hello and welcome to part two of the Dakota Digital VHX gauge cluster system installation. So now that we have our gauges installed, we can admire them. Ooh, aren't they pretty and cool and shiny? And we can begin to calibrate them and set up some of the additional options and features. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is these are the carbon fiber look backed gauges. I suppose that means it's not real carbon fiber, but you know what? They look pretty great. Uh, I am quite thrilled with them. And uh, they're very easy to read, uh, even in sunlight. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Uh, unfortunately, the flash on my camera here does make them hard to read at times, but we'll do our best. So once you have them installed, uh, you can turn them on and they're not gonna do much. Why? Because you have to calibrate them. So in order to enter setup mode, uh, those two switches that came with the kit, uh, remember we substituted ours for these micro switches here next to the clock, switch one and switch two. What you have to do is hold down switch one while you turn the ignition forward to the on position. You don't necessarily have to start the engine and that will put you into setup mode. So let me set the phone down and show you what that looks like. Holding down the button, turning the key forward, and as you can see, we are now in setup mode. So, it says setup on the LCD display, which may or may not show up well on the camera here. There we go. And then over here, you can see the different options that you go through to set up. Uh, right now it says setup speed. So, to set the speedometer, you have a few choices. Um, the easiest of which is um, a mode where you simply tell the system you're about to start a one mile trek and yes it's okay to stop during that trek and then you press the button again to say you've completed your mile and it will auto calibrate the speedometer based on that start stop input um, pretty easy to do I did it last because of course you have to drive the car to do that and I preferred all the other gauges to be working first uh, next you have setup tack um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, if you hold down your switch one, uh, instead of just tapping it, you'll actually drill down to the tack menu. And you can see here it says tack engine. That's where you tell it how many cylinders your engine has. Um, tack update, um, how frequently you want to update the tack. Um, I chose the fastest mode. I'm unsure why you'd want to choose a slower mode. Um, tack warn is very interesting. There is a WARN terminal on the control box that you could tap a wire into uh, to activate a shift light at a programmable RPM rate. Um, so that's an additional add-on that you can do, and they have you know the flexibility to let you do that, which is super cool. Um, TAC signal tells the system whether or not it's pulling a low voltage signal from an ECU or a high voltage signal from uh, ignition coil. Um, this old school vet here is definitely <laughs> Uh, going straight off the ignition. Uh, so it says done there. Once I hold down the button for a couple seconds, done will change to big done, and we can move on to the next item. Volts is pretty easy to set up, not much to do there. Um, water temp, same thing. Um, you can drill into these, and what you'll see is the type of sender, um, whether it's bus or volts that you want to use, um, a warning temperature, if it gets too hot, uh, the system will warn you. Um, and then, of course, you can test it to make sure it's working. Uh, and again, we're done. So, a very slick system here. Um, with the fuel, you have to tell it the ohm rating of your fuel pump. Uh, I believe on the Corvette, the GM typical for this year was 300 ohm, which is one of the selections. Um, what you can see here is... Uh, fuel sender, uh, GM90 is what we have it set to, I was wrong, GM250, F10, F150, 180, so a couple different options here, uh, you can set a custom one if you like, um, we're going to head and select GM90 again, and be done, um, so we're going to back out a fuel, and be done. Um, lighting, I'm not even sure what's in here. Let's take a look. Um, oh, you can set the dim level. 
um, the day level if you would like them illuminated during the day, I guess. That's pretty cool. Uh, and we're done. So, calibration is pretty painless. And uh, we chose not to set the odometer. We've rebuilt this car and we'd like to just set it at zero and treat it that way. So now we've been through all of the different setups. All we do is turn the key back and then forward again. And all of our settings are now active. And you can see our volts has popped up. Uh, our fuel gauge does have a setting on it. If I can get a good angle on the phone here. Um, now one thing I've noticed is our clock is incorrect. Let's go ahead and set the clock because that's really cool. All right, right now it says 8.02. Uh, let's go ahead and change it to 9.30 just because that'll be fun to do. Um, basically this clock over here is uh, a stepper motor that's all computer controlled. So when you hold down your number two switch, uh, the clock will begin to blink. And if you want to go to say 9.30, uh, you can press this button to increment the numbers. guess I did that wrong. You tap this one again. There we go. Um, and then you hold it down and it will scoot over to uh, the higher minute number. And then you hold it again. And then you can tap your way through that. And then hold it one more time and you are now set. So the clock is taken care of as well. So while all of this is very much fun, I'm sure we'd like to see it fire up and look at some of the other indicators we have. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, first off is blinkers. Those blinkers are integrated behind the carbon fiber look, so you don't even know they're there until they turn on. It's really nice look. I don't even know if this video is going to do it justice, um, but it's very nice to look at. Um, again, cruise control as well. You get that nice little dial look when you activate the cruise. Um, your odometer is now showing. Um, you have a digital clock over here, uh, which is an option you can change, I believe. There's the odometer. And there's a whole bunch of different settings I believe you can toggle through, and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get the camera to show you. Um, so there's your uh, version A uh, tripometer, version B. Um, that'll show you kilometers per hour. What you can see over here, I believe, is a stopwatch, uh, which is great. Um, that'll help you keep track of quarter mile times. Um, it will also show you the last high speed that the car was driven at. So my highest speed was at 52. Again, <laughs> treating this baby nice on the highway. I can't get too crazy yet. Um, it will also show you your best zero to 60 mile per hour time. Um, again, we're just paving it, so don't judge me. <laughs> um, it'll also show you your best quarter mile speed. Um, I don't know, there's, there's a whole bunch of different options in here. Um, but as you can see, um, you know, this is just not a couple of gauges. This is a full-on system, and I'm just thrilled with it. It's really, really great. Um, I can turn on the illumination mode, but I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to see it uh, until I maybe black out the LED with my finger a little bit. Let's see if I can make that happen. Ah, it gives you an idea. But it is a very, very nice looking system. Uh, I highly recommend